What's one move in bed that makes a man go crazy every time? Oh, you, you got to give him that hook too and spit on that thing. You get me? <laughs> I love seeing social media interactions, the engagement, the conversations, because it gives me an understanding of how people truly feel inside about certain topics. And recently there was this one, I put the clip of it in the beginning, of that, that reaction you saw was, or that you heard, was someone out on the streets asking a girl about what sexual act have they done to get a man super duper excited in bed and her answer was I spit on the dick it gets them crazy every time now that wasn't exactly what she said but if you read between the lines and understand that was exactly what it is and to see the reaction in the timelines both on Instagram and Facebook and also seeing it from not just a gender perspective but also from a, a cultural, subcultural perspective. So, for example, when you go to a BET page, the, the feedback is going to be different than the one on TMZ. Right? Just because the demographics of what people follow that are, are going to be different. So, I, so I'm always fascinated with, with that, just the feedback of people. And... When I saw this, it, it wasn't a shocker to me, but I find it fascinating that even for some women, it's not, but for a lot of women, it seems that it, it's a big problem or it's something that they truly don't understand about what men like in intimacy, especially in a long-term relationship. And that act alone got so much feedback from men generally saying, we're not that complicated, you know? And the women just saying, you just tell that they're very, so the, the answers are so conservative. That you can tell that they were brought up or, or they were in environments or around people that really frowned upon doing such sexual acts because it may be degrading to them. For whatever the reasons are, they frown upon such behavior. And that's been what I've noticed in social media recently. When men give feedback or talk about things, they're not even considered. It, it, they're so discredited. Like I, I, I find it fascinating all the time. Like I, I put a clip above the just on the prior podcast about a conversation that a black man was having with black co-hosts about why he was having challenges in Atlanta of dating. It, and, it, and the reason I had that clip up was because when I explained people about my Atlanta experience many years ago, that's exactly how it was for me very pretentious people cared about what you did for them and it's no different now like as far as when you get older and you're dating there is this obligation or responsibility that wants to be bestowed upon you without even knowing if you're liked not even knowing if there's any long term but as long as you are gracing their presence they're needing you to take care of them financially and I I really get blown away by that, to be honest with you, all the time. But going back to that clip, it lets me know about what I think I believe a lot of men when they're in relationships want. And and this is no particular order, but I think it's it could be changed. But I think men want a loyal. They want a nurturing and a whore like a combination of those three like you be loyal supportive nurturing and a whore they just don't want the world to know that you're a whore that's the key part ladies your man in my opinion a lot of men and the thing about those things that I said 
nurturing, I said loyal, and being a whore. But for me, there's other things. Like I want a person to be self-sufficient. But the other ones are definitely are things that men want, right? And and for me, it, when I when I talk about it that way, I gotta stop eating these peanuts. They're distracting me. So what what I what I take from that is remember the def the definition of those are different from man to man. So for you, for a man, being a whore in bed is just spitting on the deck. Or, you know, whatever it is that simple things men want sexually done is something you have to be compatible with. And I have to say compatibility because you would talk to women and you would think that sex is such a, a, a chore. Like it, it is such a chore for them to have sex, which is something that should be mutually pleasing. So if you're not being mutually pleased, then there's a incompatibility there altogether. As you all know, there's men in relationships that want sex more than women, and there's relationships with women want more sex than the men. It's not because you don't want to have it. There's just a disconnect with the chemistry. And I think that's where you have, I know that's kind of happened with me when I feel that disconnect with somebody, there isn't no excitement to be involved in an intimate matter. I'm not saying all men are like that, but I, but I'm saying that it is, understood that the sexual connection needs to be important for longevity in a relationship unless you're willing to open it unless you you can't keep up with somebody and say i gotta tap out i gotta let somebody do it and i'm not jealous about this but nevertheless i digress it's but that just seeing the feedback seeing the conversations that were being had about this and even women saying ladies you really didn't know that men are this simple did you know that I, I already know that i already know all you want is a, a loyal woman and a whore i know that and and, and those are things that it, it's hard to to really have a woman understand because they they're really offended by that like to this day there hasn't been a woman that i've been in a relationship with that can truly stomach the depths of crazy town that I'm willing to go to when it comes to the realm of intimacy. So I think that there is, you know, that, that, that there, there's a level of, sorry, I'm all, I'm distracted all over the place, but it's understanding that you, what we desire, you have to make sure that you understand the definitions of what it is that person wants because for him loyalty means they mean that you have to dress a certain way that that you're more agreeable so you have to really dig down and understand what these definitions of things are you know <laughs> like i said the definition of a war to me is different to the next guy because even guys have ranges of what they're willing to go into like non-vanilla vanilla whatever etc and and it but it's it's very but i find it that women are just so blown away that that men that many men are into that and it, it just comes down to biology especially when men have been intimate and sexually active uh in their younger years and i understand that's why i believe now i understand why the bible was saying what they were saying about don't have sex until you're married because it's not necessarily about it being a sin or not. It, it of course, and that's, that could be debatable, but but it's also uh, about about the urges, about controlling your urges. Like I know, like when I when I you know I talked to one of my exes that back in the day, that was before I had sex, and I and I, and I tell her all the time, like I'm different than then. Like meaning that when when if someone would have had me in my twenties. That range of things I would have enjoyed would have been much smaller than what it is now. Because obviously when you don't have people that want to be in a romantic relationship with you, you end up just having casual relationships. And then those casual relationships just range with the exposure. And as you can imagine, you get exposed and 
you learn things about yourself, kinks activated, so on and so forth. If you're open-minded and curious, if you're very close-minded, then you never have to worry about that, right? I mean, you never have, like when you saw somebody a toy, they're going to be like, what are you, why do you have a toy? Why are you showing me that? You know, they'll never open up to that mindset, right? So it's, but it's also being aware of the simplicity of your partner, whatever it is. And if you feel you have a lot that has to check off the box, then you're the issue. See, like the way I see it for myself anyway, I see it, I just want somebody that's like, like you know, just a, a nurturing, a whore, self-sufficient, and very loyal. And my definition of loyal is when I fucking die, you know, not, not a year or two later, you're already engaged and married somebody else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, you know, there's so many women out there that when it comes to the loyalty, their man dies. They already they already got a plan B in place. <clears throat> and I've seen it so many times out there. Now, I'm not saying that men don't do it, but I see women do it a lot more. Where it's like the guy dies, they're howling at the moon for about six months. Then a year later, they're dating somebody. And in two years, they're engaged and married to the next person. And I just felt, you know, I've already had that rant before, but... I always felt as if if you were loyal to me and loving to me and committed to me, how can you just be able to quickly turn around and love somebody the same way? Like to me, when you diving and and top it into loyalty and what that takes out of me as a person, I can't give that to the next person. That takes time for me to unwind, to mourn, to, to have the loss but this whole idea, it, it doesn't resonate with me. So for me, loyalty is more about making me feel like you don't have a backup plan and then some. Like that you're making me feel like there's nobody else. That like you got to make me feel that. You know, that you want to ride it out to the very end. Like you're not thinking about a plan B. You're not thinking about, oh, when I die, what are you going to get? And, you know, what are the guys you have in the pipeline? I don't want that. Right? When I talk about nurturing... I just want somebody that I can come home to and they can cook for me once in a while. They can just rub my feet once in a while. They can just be, just rub hands on me. Just soothe me from whatever it is I need soothing for. Uh, Self-sufficient, that's already explained. I've already talked about that. Somebody that can, is living their life already as is and without any need of help of any kind like they just want a compliment in their life and then obviously the whore is just whatever your interpretation is or whatever it is that you want to get in bed so but it is it's funny that something as her saying hey listen i spit on my man's dick and i know they they love that <clears throat> you don't think that girl's gonna eventually i mean like there, there's gonna be a guy that that probably already has or is trying to tie her up lock her up because of that and that's how silly guys are. It, re- it really is. It's like as long as you're not high maintenance, easygoing, agreeable. I'm not saying you have to agree all the time, but you can disagree. And and if you and if you disagree, do it respectfully behind scenes, <clears throat> right? And and all these different things that are very simple to a man, like women just don't understand. Like I find it fascinating. Like women just look at this. I'm a queen. Hear me roar. You deal with me. I'm like, yeah. I mean, for the peasants, yeah, they, they're going to treat you like a queen. But <clears throat> when you're dealing with somebody that is like at your level or greater, they don't look at you as a queen. No, they don't look. They look at you as, a, as an equal or inferior. And then what are you going to do about that? Because your resume, it, it was, I'll leave with this. It was funny because I was seeing women like they, it was a joke that was being said about women with kids looking for you know a high valued man <laughs> and it, it was something along the lines of a woman that's that her situation is not the most attractive but they put themselves in that level of being attractive and that the, a man of high caliber is going to come in and save the day and i think that men at this stage the younger men anyway are 
being very smart about all of that. So it's like it's exposing, you know, obviously when guys catch feelings, all that shit goes to the wayside. But I I believe that the awareness more is out there more so than ever of how people have, especially women, are, are, are able to be disingenuous or have different ulterior motives than men. And, and I'm glad that we have these platforms of people talking about their life experiences because I knew that mine weren't out of the norm. Like, I, I think people would make you feel as if the things I feel or have experienced are diminished, which I see women always do in social media. When a guy talks about his feelings, about what he's experienced, oh, he's sassy. Oh, he's a girly man. You're chasing the wrong women. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. I could say the same thing about you. Like, I could say you're constantly chasing the wrong men if you're going to say that. <clears throat> right? Sometimes people are very good at hiding their intentions. And and that's the problem that we have out in the dating world is that people are not trusting of the next person because it's, it's already known that people don't truly convey who they truly are until they're deeply tied up in a situation with somebody i know i've learned that the hard way and because of that you have to do even better vetting but but it, it's understanding that your definitions and what you want while it may be simple some people just judge on it people frown upon it people still have trauma that they're working through that doesn't allow them to be open to those things that you want and it's okay but we just have to at least acknowledge that, that we're just not comfortable with those things instead of shaming other people for what they like and don't like. So if you are sure, if you have a husband that's moody and a bit ratty and all of these things and you've tried everything, you tried like being nice to him and it's not working, have a look at your the the physical intimacy. If that's even remotely missing, it's like they, they can't activate the happy switch until that's been activated, unfortunately. so And I think women really underestimate it, myself included, until I've been working with men. It is the most important form of appreciation in their world like of course with everything else but they need it's a, it's a way of feeling all types of intimacy physical emotional everything comes from that so it is really important plus the verbal affirmations and all those other things but that's a really important and element of it and it is a guard for infidelity as well 